Have you ever wondered how a sugar pill can sometimes make you feel better? This captivating question brings us to the perplexing world of placebos. In the realm of medicine, placebos often take center stage in a fascinating performance of mind over matter. We're talking about substances with no active therapeutic effect, like sugar pills or saline injections, that can, astonishingly, induce real and measurable changes in the body. Imagine a simple tablet made of chalk, when believed to be a potent medication, can alleviate pain, improve mood, or even reduce the symptoms of Parkinson's disease. It's a puzzle that's been tickling the curiosity of scientists for decades. How can an inert substance, void of any medicinal properties, trigger such significant physiological responses? The answer lies deep within the intricate labyrinth of our brains. So buckle up as we embark on this fascinating journey. To understand this phenomenon, we first need to delve into the neuroscience behind placebos. Our brain is a complex machine that can be tricked into healing the body. This is the power of placebos. So how does this work? It all boils down to the neurochemical changes that placebos induce. These sugar pills, or sham treatments, can trigger the release of neurotransmitters like dopamine and endorphins, the brain's feel-good chemicals. They're like your body's natural painkillers and mood lifters. But it doesn't stop there. Placebos also activate specific brain regions involved in pain relief and mood regulation. Think of areas like the prefrontal cortex, which helps us assess pain, and the amygdala, our emotional control center. These areas light up, responding as if they were dealing with a real active treatment. And the best part? These responses aren't just in our heads. They can lead to real measurable physiological changes, from reducing pain to lifting moods. So our brain's response to placebos is real and measurable, but how does this play out in clinical trials? In the world of clinical trials, placebos serve as a vital control mechanism. They hold the key to separating real treatment effects from psychological responses. When developing new drugs or therapies, it's crucial to compare the active treatment with a placebo to discern the genuine therapeutic benefits. This is where the concept of double-blind studies comes in. Neither the participant nor the researcher knows who's receiving the real treatment versus the placebo. This rigorous approach helps to eliminate bias and ensure the results are based on the actual efficacy of the treatment, not the power of belief or expectation. Yet even with such stringent controls, the placebo effect can sometimes account for a significant portion of the perceived benefits. This phenomenon underscores the profound influence our minds can have on our bodies. The placebo effect is not just a curious quirk of clinical trials. It's a testament to the power of the mind-body connection. Our beliefs and expectations can shape our biology. This is the essence of the mind-body connection. The placebo effect is a compelling example of this connection. It underscores the remarkable capacity of our minds to influence our physical health outcomes, even in the absence of active treatment. Just think about it. When we believe that a sugar pill is a potent medication, our bodies can respond as if it were. Our minds, convinced that a healing process is underway, can trigger physiological changes that mirror those produced by actual drugs. The pain subsides, the heart rate slows, the mood lifts. It's as if our bodies are following a script written by our beliefs and expectations. This mind-body dialogue is not just fascinating, it's also fundamental to our understanding of health and healing. It challenges the traditional separation of physical and mental health and emphasizes the integrated nature of our well-being. Placebos can affect a range of conditions, but some factors can influence our response to them. Not all placebo responses are created equal. Several factors can enhance or diminish their effects. Every placebo response is unique, shaped by a multitude of factors. For instance, the cost or branding of a treatment can play a significant role. It's been shown that expensive-looking placebos often have a stronger effect than their cheaper counterparts. Similarly, a well-known brand can trigger a more potent placebo response than a generic treatment. Then there are pill characteristics. The color and size of a pill can influence how effective we perceive it to be. For example, red or orange pills are often seen as stimulating, while blue or green ones are viewed as calming. Even the demeanor of a healthcare provider can sway the placebo effect. A caring, empathetic provider can enhance the effect, while a cold, impersonal one can diminish it. But as we leverage the power of placebos, we must also consider the ethical implications. Harnessing the placebo effect isn't without its ethical dilemmas. The use of placebos in clinical practice can raise a host of ethical questions. Central to these is the principle of informed consent. This means that patients must be fully aware of and understand the nature of their treatment, 
including the use of placebos. If not, we run the risk of undermining trust, a cornerstone of the patient-doctor relationship. Then there's the potential for deception. Using a placebo without transparency may lead patients to believe they're receiving a treatment that doesn't exist. This could delay access to effective treatments, potentially causing harm. Lastly, consider the ethical quandary of withholding potent treatments in favor of placebos. This could potentially deprive patients of therapies that have been scientifically proven to be effective. The placebo effect challenges us to rethink our understanding of health and healing, reminding us that our minds are powerful allies in our quest for well-being.